Thank you very much. I'm Sonia Puncher Rickman, a member of the External Advisory Board and of the Austrian Academy of Sciences. Thank you very much for a utterly inspiring speech. I have tried to keep track of Chinese development, reading a lot, but yeah, I will certainly not uh, have reached the point of Matteo Ricci. Uh, I have a question with which is a politico-philosophical question. How would you um, estimate the Chinese capacity to deal with discontinuities and to integrate that into the Taiwanese question? Uh, perhaps you will now tell me that I don't understand anything of Taiwan, and I would take that, but it is a democratic state. Is that not the case, in your opinion? And if so, um, how would, um, in a Chinese reading, um, to be dealt with with this democratic development as a different one as uh, China has experienced, um, in order to perhaps assess the whole question of independence in a different way. Is that at all feasible, thinkable, etc.? We had a similar development with Hong Kong, hadn't we? Uh, where there was this solution of um, one country, two systems. And, um, well, I don't think that China really lived up to that. But, yeah, perhaps you see this differently. Thank you. China never accepted the Treaty of Nanjing, which uh, ceded Hong Kong in perpetuity to the British as being a valid treaty. They never accepted that. The issue was not put to the test because a large part of Hong Kong on the mainland side was leased to uh, Britain uh, for 99 years. And, and even by British uh, law, that land had to be returned. And when that land is returned, Hong Kong is no longer viable. In 1984, 1982, Margaret Thatcher visited Teng Xiaoping and mooted the idea of uh, another 50 years of British rule. Uh, she was badly advised. Uh, Teng Xiaoping, with great accuracy, spat into a spittoon. You know? <laughs> and Margaret Thatcher was so rattled when she left the Great Hall of the People, she tripped on the steps. And they knew that that's not negotiable. So in 1984, they had the Joint Declaration. Now, the Joint Declaration is asserted by the British as a treaty which bound China post-1997. Uh, China never accepted that. The Joint Declaration is called a Joint Declaration because you make your declaration, I make my declaration, we put it out together in order to facilitate a smooth handover on June 30th, 1997. It was not the treaty. If it was the treaty like the Treaty of Nanjing, it would have been called a treaty. So the Chinese are saying, once we have a smooth handover, sovereignty has returned to China. But China in this declaration said that it will promulgate a basic law, which it legislated in consultation of Hong Kong people, under which one country, two systems would last for 50 years. In that basic law, a national security law in Hong Kong must be enacted. So for 20 over years, it was never enacted, which means that in terms of performance, it, 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 Hong Kong failed to keep up its side of the bargain. So the mainland then imposed national security law on Hong Kong, but still requires Hong Kong to make subsidiary legislation. And that's right now being done. I lived in Hong Kong during that period, uh, and my wife and I no longer felt safe. I saw the way the social media uh, was systematically demonizing the police, and the Hong Kong police is nothing like police in Paris or Los Angeles or New York. And they were extremely well behaved, but they were made to look as if they all had horns and tails, which was utterly not the case. But there was a game being played. Cui Bono, who benefited from the Hong Kong uh, unrest? It led to the re-election of Tsai Ing-wen because all the pundits said that she would lose to uh, Han Kuo Yi. But because of what happened in Hong Kong, the whole table turned. So I have a very interpretation of Hong Kong, and it's based upon my own experience living there and the sort of things which were happening. 
that when they stormed the legislature, I think it was Nancy Pelosi who said, oh, what a glorious sight, until January 6th happened. <laughs> then it didn't look so glorious after that. So the double standards were so thick, you could cut through it with a knife. Yeah. So I, on Taiwan, China has told Taiwan, you can keep the army. Yeah. So long as you accept the idea of one China, you can interpret it the way you want. It means that you're not going independent. And one day when we unite, maybe I'll drop PRC, you drop ROC, and we can call it China. Yeah. So it is an internal affair. It is one of reconciliation. You know, when Annalena Baerbock, the, the German foreign secretary, visited, foreign minister visited uh, China recently, State Councillor Wang Yi, who was a former foreign minister, he said something which to me was very moving. He said, we supported German unific reunification. We hope Germany will support our reunification. Germany was divided because it was an aggressor. China was divided because it was a victim. So the moral cause of German reunification is on any balance greater than German reunification. I thought that was a very powerful message that Wang Yi, Wang Yi uh, put across, but it was hardly reported in your media. Royal Face, KS Royal Face 皇家颜值逆时奇迹系列他添加五种EGF 专门防止肌肤老化强化皮肤修复增加肌肤弹性水嫩轻松抚平皱纹快回青春自信 